Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And uh, we have a fascinating broadcast for you this morning, a discovery that I've made in the Hebrew Matthew, Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew. And uh, I am on the edge of my seat uh, to be able to share this with you. And uh, so we're going to be looking at some very fascinating biblical facts there. We're going to be going into the book of Matthew, chapter 24, 2 Timothy uh, as well, chapter 3. Matthew, chapter 10, beware of men. Boy, this is going to, this, uh, and I'm going to share with you in just a moment here what brought me to this. I'm going to be getting into all kinds of fascinating biblical passages here. We have Matthew 10 up on the Hebrew Matthew uh, Jude, we're going to be looking at Jude once again as a result of the discovery uh, by the grace of God that I was able to make. But also I want to quickly, because the situation in La Palma is so dire, I wanted to share that information with you. This is the live footage. Look at this. Look at what the world, the La Palma volcano is doing, like a blowtorch coming out of the earth. And listen, last night, I was planning on recording this. It was 11 p.m. That's exactly what the volcano was doing then, like a blowtorch, just blowing into the sky there. And uh, and the swarm of earthquakes that are happening at La Palma, it is unbelievable what's going on right there. Um, very, very dangerous, dangerous situation. As we had mentioned to you before, uh, the local officials are expecting a 6.0 or greater. This morning, there was a 4.2 magnitude earthquake on the island there. There are a number, a huge number of earthquakes taking place. Another swarm, as you can see here. This is just in the last 24 hours. Look at the number of the earthquakes that are going off there. So anyway, so let's get ready. Let's get started. We're going to get... We're going to get really into what's going on, uh, going on uh, biblically here, because I really I believe that the discovery that the Lord has led me to here uh, is really going to be an eye opener for so, so many people. So um, at any rate, let's let's get going here. We got to deal with the cat real quick because I got a cat there. Uh, crying in the background, only when her sister's missing, that's when he starts going nuts. So anyway, then we'll get rolling here. All right. Now, what really kind of got me stirred, it had been on my heart to speak about uh, the situation that we're seeing here in the end of days. And that is, there's such an increase of tensions in families not like never before. And some might attribute it to the uh, current situation that's happened globally. You know, so many people, uh, they're, you know, following this mandate and, uh, and, and, and getting stuck. And it might be blamed on that. It might be blamed on, you know, the financial stress in families, uh, things of that nature. But and, and, and no doubt a lot of these things are contributing factors, but I, I really believe, and, and, and listen, comment, put, put comment, let us know about what you think on this, but are you seeing those frictions really in the families? I mean, this is really what Matthew chapter 10 has a lot to do with, um, you know, because you're going to have, you know, the father is going to be, let's see, verse 21, for example, and the brother shall deliver up brother to death. The father, the child, the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. I mean, think of this. But what's interesting is notice what's happening. The brother shall deliver a brother to death. The father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Is there ever been a time in the history of mankind where that can be happening and the children, the fathers, the parents, the brother, maybe not even realize they're delivering up 
the loved ones to death. Did you ever think about that? I mean, that is a completely different thing. You should be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now, of course, that final verse right there kind of gives us that time frame of where we're at. Okay? But this one, this one right here is, is the one that just gets me. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, the father the child, and so on and so forth, right? Think about that. That, that if you just took the scripture alone and looked at it that way, besides what I'm about to blow your mind away with, that makes you really do some serious thinking. Because it's almost like impossible. How could it be that we'd live in a day to where a brother would deliver his own brother up to his own death, the father of the child, the children should rise up against the parents and cause them to be put to death. See, cause them to be put to death. How many children, so to speak, have their parents that are in nursing homes convict, uh, committed to the mandate? Thinking they're doing them good, maybe. And, and, and I don't know. Maybe that's not what Jesus was speaking about, that this was going to happen in our day. It's a conjecture. But when you find out about chapter 10, Matthew, what's but beware of men really is, in the Greek, no, but you got to remember the Greek version of scriptures that we have, the oldest that we have is about 400 years after the time of Christ. Just imagine how much they had got to manipulate that, the Vatican, that is. The Vatican, by the way, who has the closest relationship there is to the alien agenda. Oh, yeah. They have the closest relationship to the alien agenda. Then you might take a look at 2 Timothy. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins and led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. By the way, how that is not so distorted in biblical circles. It's not silly women. It's basically unlearned women. Or little women, literally, is what I think. Believe, if I'm not mistaken on the Greek, yes, little women. But look at the ungodly men that are doing this. They creep in. They literally, they come in as a thief into the house. And they abduct these little women. And the ones that are laden with the sins and, and with every diver's lust, it's not the woman, it's that man that comes in there. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. See, they have the ability to learn, but they don't have the ability to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, and now notice what verse 8 says. Now, as James and Jambers withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. James and Jambers. What a comparison. By the way, James and Jambers were Nephilim bloodlines. So makes you wonder then, who is the scripture over in 2 Timothy really talking about? It appears to me that 2 Timothy knew about Nephilim's, Nephilim that were in among them and what they were doing. Oh, they were ever learning, 
but they were abducting these women. And again, like I said, it's not, it's not silly women. Better to translate that little women. And before I show you some things in Greek, I'm going to first quickly remind you in the book of Jude, because you might think, well, wow, that can't be possible. Remember what Jude said, for there are certain men, certain, certain type of men, crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation of godly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. There you go. They creep in unaware. You don't realize who they are. And they're taking captive your women. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, because they were Nephilim. And the angels which kept not their first estate, he's, showing, he's typing it for you, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved and everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Alien, demonic. Do you see where Jude was trying to get you to understand? Now, I'm, I'm saying these things because what I discovered in Matthew 10 in the Hebrew version, Shem Tov's Matthew right here, is going to take you completely off the charts. Now, granted, just verse 17 is worded, and 17 and 18 is worded a little different. I'll read to you the way they translate it in English. Although the translation is incorrect, I will tell you what they translate it as. Beware of men. Now they say they will not deliver you up in their sen in their congregation in the houses of assembly, but to governors and kings. And you will bear witness on my behalf to them and to the Gentiles. Now that's a minor issue in my opinion there, because we read in Matthew 10, 17, Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. The difference in this would be here is that the Hebrew Matthew makes it appear that they're not they're going to kind of bypass the synagogue, which would have been the way of of um, judgment in the first place. They're just going to bypass that. They're going to take you straight to court, right down to the judge. But when they deliver you up, take no thought for what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you in that same hour that you shall speak. All right? But that wasn't the issue for me. Because I read Hebrew, I'm looking at this in the Hebrew language, and I see on here, they have on here in English, beware of men. But over here, in, in the Hebrew part, and I'm going to highlight it. I don't know how well you guys will see that as far as highlighting it. It says, Hazaharu bivene Adam. Now, most of you, I'm sure, don't speak Hebrew. So I will translate for you what it actually says. The first word comes, literally the root is Zohar. Zohar. Anybody have any idea what the word Zohar means? Zohar is what the Jewish people have. I have a whole, the whole collection of the Zohar, 23, 24 volumes of it. But the word Zohar means shining. Yeah. Shining is what Zohar means. And it says, Bevene Adam. Bene Adam, not, not Bevene. But Bene Adam are the sons of men. If you add the Bet in front of the Bet Nun Yod, which Bene would be sons, plural. But if you add another Bet in front of that, that means in the sons. So in the case of Bevene Adam, in the sons of men. But Ha. Zahu 
And we got the Vav at the end of Zohar. All right, Zohar, Zohau, which pluralizes it as well. And then you have the definite article, He, in front of Zohar. So it's saying the shining ones, yeah, that's what Haza Zohau means. The shining ones, Bevene Adam, the shining ones in the sons of man, they will not deliver you up to their congregation and houses assembly, but to governors and kings. The shining ones in the sons of man. Why do you think I had that picture up for you today? The shining ones. Now, I don't know if that's really the way they look or whatever. I'm not, that's not the point of that there. But the point is, is what the scripture says in the Hebrew. The shining ones in the sons of man. You're talking about hybrid beings. You're talking about Nephilim. Nephilim are the sons of the Nephilim. The Nephilim are the fallen ones. The fallen ones are the fallen angels. What did we just read in the scriptures? Right? What did Jude say? And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of the great day. And he compared those fallen angels to who? For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord, uh, the, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jude says, I'll put you in remembrance. So you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. What, the, one, the, only, the reason why they couldn't, the ones that couldn't believe is because they were hybrid children to begin with. Hybrid children. Yes. And then you have in Matthew 24, for example, we jump over to Matthew 24. Notice what it says there, right? You're going to have famine, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. And all that, by the way, is just rolling right into place, right? I mean, of course, now we could take we could take a look at La Palma and say, oh, well, that's a volcano. It didn't say volcano, but the volcano happens to be getting the whole dead blasted island rock with earthquakes, Right? More than 200 in the last 24 hours and a 4.2 just popped up there. That's, that's moving on up now. That's what they're afraid of, a big enough earthquake causing that. Because you got to remember too, Jesus also says in Matthew 24 that the sea will be roaring. That's tidal waves. That's tsunamis. He said those are just the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise, shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. There again, we get this betrayal. This ungodliness that's happening. And right now, over this whole major mandate thing they have moving going on, and you know, I just can't say the words here. It's literally causing people to deliver their loved ones up to death. You are seeing 2 Timothy play out right before your eyes. You're seeing uh, Matthew 10. And Matthew 10 doesn't only just speak of the shining ones being in, in the sons of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, they will scourge you in their synagogues. But he goes on to say, and you shall be brought before the governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought for what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you in that same, in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the Holy Spirit of your Father which speaks in you. All right? And the brother shall deliver up brother to death. The father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause, cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. 
but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Unbelievable. Now, let's take, go back over here to 2 Timothy. Because even though 2 Timothy seems similar, but not exactly the same, it's that verse 6. They creep into houses and lead captive. They put on their silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, like the women are some kind of evil, ungodly women. But they are compared to Janes and Jambers. That's where the real issue comes in. It withstood Moses. So looking at some of these Greek words here, all right, for example here, let's take this one right here. I uh, have to get caught up where I had it at and why I had which words where. Let me just take a peek real quick. And so, okay, yeah, here we go. So you're, you're looking at the house. I thought I had these laid out in order. Clothed with, or to put on to clothe with a garment. All right. All right. Okay. That. That. Okay. Now I remember. Now. All right. Got it. Let's. Let's. Let's go into this. Let me get to this last one right here. Okay. A weak woman. Literally, it's a little woman. All right. So when we back up, and we look at this right here, we need to get this first word here, the hotus. All right. It's a plural masculine. And it's persons or things. So what we're looking at, and let me pull Timothy, let's, let's get these side by side here. And let me, let me take and let's highlight this a different color. Huh. Don't want to get that in there. For this sort, which they that creep into houses, which they... The first part is that it's a masculine plural. So we know it's men. There are only men creeping into those houses, right? Then the next word that we have in here is the Greek word induno. They put on, they literally to put on a clothes with a garment. The, the, the they that crept in, they're putting on a cloth, like, like they put on a cloth like a garment. And then they do what? And they come into a house or a dwelling. And then they take captive little women. Now, the reason why I wanted to share with you what the Greek is in here, because when I'm looking at this almost word for word as I look at this right here, right? For this sort. Can't get it to. Are they which creep into houses? They're literally, it's just like what we had in Matthew 10. I'm trying to find a way for we can kind of just, there we go. I think I got it now. I can just do the verse only. There we go. For this sort right here, this first part right there. Let's, let's highlight all this stuff individually. Okay. They which creep. And then maybe what you'll get where I'm going at. Into houses. All right. And, and lead. All right. Make that one purple. Make that one that kind of color. Now let's make that one green. And then of course you got the 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 silly women, which are not really silly. 
They're just little women. Now, here's where we're at. For this sort, that, that's your masculine plural. It's some type of masculine entities there. They creep. All right. When they creep, that's the word right here in uh, in duno. It's literally to put on a garment. Is what that word is there in duno. And, uh, and you won't be able to see this, but I've got it pulled up over here. Um, yes, in duno. That's the, that that word being that they creep. They 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 they're putting on a garment. All right, they creep into houses. That can literally be your body. So this sort, this masculine entities, they actually, according to what it is saying here in the Greek language, these entities are these things, these masculine things here. They, in do know, they're putting on a garment and that garment is, is a house or a body, a dwelling place. They put that on. They creep in there, basically. They creep into these bodies, and then they come in there, and they're going after these little women. And they're taking them captive. Abductions. If you ever knew what happened before the flood, these fallen angels appeared as if they were the women's husbands. They basically crept in and put on a body that looked like their husbands. Now, I wanted to bring that out mainly because of why Matthew 10 in the Hebrew doesn't say, it doesn't say beware of men. Oh, that's a good point. Beware of them because there's some pretty doggone bad men out there. But it literally says, Zohar, ha ha zoharu bevene adam. The shining ones in men, they're the ones that are going to deliver you up to be afflicted in the court system. And then we find out that at that same time when all this is happening, this is where we find out brother will deliver you up to brother to death and father his son. The sons will rise up against their fathers and lead them unto death. They're leading them. Even in the Hebrew, they lead them into death. And the Greek caused them to be killed. And it looks like that that's the hour we're living in right now. And how many times have I already told you that this whole mandate agenda that they're forcing on the population of the whole globe was actually began as an alien agenda. That's exactly right. It began as an alien agenda. And they want to be like you. They want to have a body like yours. They have hybrids. And the hybrid looks like a human. But they're not. And there's a lot of hybrids. Now, is the hybrid, is that the ones that are doing this? I can't say for sure on all of that. All I can show you is that scripturally we were warned and we didn't get the scripture. I mean, do you really, are you, are you, is it sinking in what I'm telling you? Do you realize what Jesus says in Matthew 24? They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. But did you remember what he also said in Matthew 24 when you get down here to verse 35, 36, 37, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days of Noah, they were what? Before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. That was fallen angels taken away. Remember, the fallen angels were much bigger than we were. So in their statue compared to the women, the women were little women. So the fallen angels were doing what? They were, one, they, when they first appeared, the women didn't accept it. So then they changed their form to look like their husbands. 
That's, that's literally in one of the Egyptian documents. They changed their form to look like their husbands and then the women accepted them because they thought it was their husbands. And another translation besides little women is women without the knowledge. They didn't have the knowledge to know that the devils could do this. Now begin to piece together the scripture, right? Now begin to look at what Hebrew Matthew says there, these shining ones in, in the sons of man. They're the ones that will take and cause this to happen to you. Jude said they crept in unaware, but they were of old ordained to this condemnation. The only ones that were ordained to condemnation were Nephilim, the children of the fallen angels. That's why Timothy says, not only does he uh, mention what I just read to you here, but you got to remember Timothy also brought out another issue. Right? I'll just have to read it because I can't get it to back up on the screen for you. But remember, he says, this know also that, you know, okay, we got this perilous time shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, right? Got all these things here. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. Now, going down to verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as James and Jambers withstood Moses, so do these who also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all as, there, as theirs also was. They, the apostles were trying to warn us, and we've been running around like the ostrich with his head in the ground. I'm sure there's a few other illustrations other people will give you that are probably a little bit more colorful than mine. Friends, we're in a late hour. A very, very late hour. And the times for playing church has got to come to an end. If what we're saying to you blesses you and it's, it's what you believe, Support the work that we're doing. There's not many people that support what we do anymore. Because they're, they've, they're just blinded to the nonsense. But I keep, I keep chipping away, trying everything I can to get you to see what the Word of God says. So stand with us and support the work we're doing in this hour. You can donate online by clicking on the link right there on our website, israelinewslive.org. And our mailing address in the same box there, right there at the top on the right there. To Noon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. We appreciate your support. And it's a late hour. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Also, keep your eyes on La Palma. It's a very, very volatile situation.